Hi everyone, so today I'm going to make a short video to show you how I put a grid on my reference photos using GIMP. GIMP stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program. It's an open source program which means it's totally free to download and use on either Mac or PC. So after you make your screen full screen, you then need to close down the rulers and I like to turn off the show layer boundary as well. You need to give yourself as much screen size as you can. Then you zoom in on the image as much as you can, but as long as the whole image is visible on your screen. So I'm going to have to reduce the amount of zoom on that one so it fits. Okay, so now it's fitting on the screen. I then go show grid and then under image you do configure grid. The first thing I do is I change the color of the grid lines. I pick a color that isn't really appearing in the image. So light blue works for this one. Then you only adjust the horizontal spacing. You just keep pressing the up arrow until the grid is the size that you want. I like to move it so the squares go perfectly to the edge and you so you're not like cutting a square in half or something. So after you're happy with the placement of your grid, you hit OK and then you need to count how many grid squares you have going both up the side, up the height of the image and also across the top. So in for this one there were 16 squares going up on the height. You then multiply that number by a number that will then give you what is basically the size of your paper. So my paper is 56 centimeters um, high and 76 centimeters wide. So if I multiply 16 by 3.5, you get 56, which is the size of my paper. So then you count how many squares you've got across. In this case, it was 20. So you have to multiply this number by the same number that you multiplied the other one by. So 3.5. So 20 times 3.5 equals 70. So in this case, because my paper is 76 centimetres wide and the grid would come to 70 centimetres, that means I would have 3 centimetres of border on each side. So because I wasn't happy with the fact that I wouldn't have a border um, on the height, I'm going to use the crop tool to actually remove a row of grid on the height so that I end up with only 15 squares high. So then if you multiply 15 by 3.5 you get 52.5 which means I'd have a couple of centimetres on each side for a border as well. So now you want to make the image fill the screen as much as you possibly can. So I need to adjust the zoom until I can fit it in almost perfectly. Okay, so that's good now. So then what I do is I make a series of screen captures so that I can then work off those screen captures that will have the grid on them. So on the, on the Mac it's shift command and number four. You then drag the cursor until you've covered the whole image that you want to um, capture. So the first one I do is the, um, the full picture. Then I zoom in 100% so that the images that I have will be much more zoomed in and easier to see. So then you have to use the scroll bars to position the image so it's in 
the top left corner. After you've taken the first screen capture, you use the scroll bar to scroll across and take a second screen capture. You then figure out what part of the image you've captured and then using the sidebar you scroll down and then you can capture the next section. So depending how much you've zoomed in, you may need to take, you know, as many as 10 screen caps of the image. And obviously the more detailed it is, the, you know, the better it is for you to zoom in. Sometimes I'll zoom in even 200% on the image if I need to. So after you, you take the screen caps, you are then finished with using GIMP. So you can then just close down the program and I don't need to save the file because I'd already saved it previously so just discard changes, close that down properly. So then what you need to do is find where all the screen captures have gone. Normally they go to the desktop but in this case they went to a um, folder I created. So find that folder there they are. So select all your screen captures, then right click and go share, airdrop, and then I airdrop them to my iPad. So after putting them on my iPad, I then basically work off those images on my iPad. You don't have to, I mean, I used to just use the computer, but now we only have one computer between the two of us, so I use my iPad instead. Um, so that's it. I hope you found this um, brief tutorial helpful. Um, thanks for watching and um, if you like this video please like and subscribe and I'm going to bring out some more hopefully soon. Thanks, bye!